listening to Drive with Sarah McDonald on ABC Radio. Well, I want to tell you now about an incredible discovery. Archaeologists have uncovered the exceptionally well-preserved remains of two men scalded to death by the volcanic eruption that destroyed the ancient city of Pompeii. The remains were found in an underground chamber in the area of a large villa being excavated. Here to tell us all about this is Dr Estelle Laser. She is a prominent archaeologist who teaches at the University of Sydney and she's worked extensively on the human bones of Pompeii with some groundbreaking research that has attracted international acclaim. And she joins us now. Hello, Estelle. Good afternoon. How does this discovery compare to others that you have worked on? Um, well, it's quite amazing really finding the perfectly preserved remains of individuals who were killed in the mass disaster of Mount Vesuvius erupting in AD 79 isn't very common at all. So to date, only 106 victims have been successfully cast and three of those are not human. There's a horse, a pig and a dog. All right. And so what do we know about these two men? Uh, these two people uh, have been studied before the casts were made. So there's a younger individual who's been um, assessed to be somewhere between the late teens and early 20s. So getting age at death from skeletal evidence is um, there's a, quite a bit of biological range. Uh, and they're both males. Um, and the other one is a mature adult, probably in their 30s or 40s. And what, what have we found out that's new about it now? Well, we just don't get very many of them and they often haven't been studied. So the current project that I'm involved with um, between the University of Sydney and the um, Pompeii Archaeological Park is to actually study all the casts, which um, previously they were the casts were made without looking at the bones. So we've been X-raying and CT scanning these casts. So to have them studied before the cast made is really unusual uh -huh. and at so, first, I'd say. Right. Okay. And so, so from this study, they're now saying they believe that one is a master and one a slave. How, how do we know that? Um, well, maybe that's pushing the evidence a little bit. Right. One of the individuals, the younger one, has um, what appear to be compressed discs. So that suggests that they were working very hard, doing very heavy manual labour, maybe carrying very heavy weights. Um, and they, the interpretation is that would be consistent with being a slave. But honestly, honestly, we don't know for certain about that. And the other one looks very robust. And so where were they found in, in relation to Pompeii and do we know how long they survived after the volcano started uh, started exploding? Right. So they're found about 700 or so metres to the northwest. So the whole of the Bay of Naples, which was a wonderful place, um, it was just lined, the coastline was lined with villas and they founded a villa that's currently on a private property that was excavated. Excavations, I think, started in 2017 because the uh, military police were chasing looters and they found this amazing villa. They managed to find um, three horses and quite big ones with the trappings and then just recently these two individuals who perished. And do we know how they died, what actually it was about the volcano that killed them? Yes, so they, they would have died in the second phase of the eruption. So just very briefly, the eruption occurred in two phases. So the first phase was a series of explosions and that resulted in an enormous eruption column capped by a cloud and that hailed ash and pumice down in the direction of the wind on that day, which was towards Pompeii to the southeast. And um, that covered the site to a height of somewhere between two and a half and 2.8 metres, a little less further away from the site where this is. And then when the explosion stopped, the eruption column, which reached into the stratosphere somewhere between 27 and 32 kilometres, it's estimated. It started, it couldn't support itself, so it started to collapse. And then you get a series of hot gas avalanches and they come in two forms. Um, one's quite dense avalanches and the other's these very dilute avalanches of um, 
particles suspended in hot air and gas, and they come whipping down the mountain at speeds anywhere between 100 and 300 kilometres an hour, have temperatures anywhere between 100 and 600 degrees Celsius, very little free oxygen, um, lots of poisonous material, pick up anything in their path and turn it into projectiles. So the chances of surviving are very, very minimal. And we see on these victims their limbs are contracted, and this is... Um, uh, the effect of heat on protein that causes it to contract. So it's thought that they would have um, at minimum experienced temperatures of at least 200 to 250 degrees Celsius at or around the time of death. So they probably would have died very, very quickly right. from, from experiencing from the heat. second phase. So they were probably trying to, to, to hide away and went down underneath but were overcome. Yes, yes. So right. I'm sure they were trying to keep away from... The, um, well, the material that was building up from the first phase of the eruption and then they were hit by the second phase. We're talking to Dr Estelle Laser on ABC Radio, Sydney, an archaeologist at the University of Sydney who's worked extensively on, on the human bones at, at Pompeii. So how many other human remains have been found at Pompeii and, and how has your work really overturned some of the myths and beliefs we had before this into what was happening there? Right. Well, um, unfortunately, they, they started excavating Pompeii. That's not unfortunate. In 1748, before archaeology really became a discipline as we know it now. And so the early excavations weren't well documented. So we don't know exactly how many victims have been uncovered, but well in excess of a thousand, well in excess of probably 1,200 individuals have been um, excavated so far. And people wrote about them without actually studying the bones. So it was assumed they're very old people, very young people, um, people who had things wrong with them, infirmity and um, children were the ones who became victims. So what, what we found with um, the studies we've been doing is that we have a random, what appears to be a random sample of a normally distributed population of victims. So this gives us a fantastic snapshot of um, not the whole population, the population of victims, but they seem to be a good reflection of who was living in Pompeii when Mount Vesuvius erupted. So we don't have anything to compare with this from antiquity. It's so many individuals who died of the same event at the same time. It's a great window into the past. It's do, fantastic. Yeah. Do you expect to find more? Oh, yes. So, yes. So um, inside the walls, there's 66 hectares and there's still another 20 or so to be excavated. And wherever you put your trail, you will find, you know, buildings, um, what's inside them, beautiful wall paintings, sculptures, small finds, and of course, victims of the eruption. And and of course, there's also a lot of people who are trying to escape. And mm. as we dig beyond the walls, we're going mm. to find more and more mm. of these victims. Are you itching to get back there when this is all over? Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> yes, it's been a very strange year. Mm. Normally, I'd be over there. <laughs> yeah, you would indeed. All right. Well, it's incredible work. And thank you so much for talking to us about it this afternoon. Oh, a pleasure. Thank you. That's Dr Estelle Laser, an archaeologist at the University of Sydney. It's incredible stuff, isn't it? She's worked extensively on the, on the human bones at Pompeii with more information coming through about uh, these, these two figures now. So much more, obviously, to discover, though. 